What's going on everybody? It is your man Cleveland Terry and today we are going to give you an update on the Bose L1 Pro 32 line array system. And I'm gonna say this right now. I am super, super impressed by it. Okay, so you guys probably saw the previous view where I talked a little bit about just kind of comparing it to the JBL Eon versus the line array system. And what I said was, you know, it's gonna be really hard to kind of figure out exactly the way it sounds like until I get it into a room, till I can actually play it out to people, hear how it sounds, throw mics on it, like all these little things that really kind of distinguish what a good system should sound like. It's one thing to play something isolated to yourself. It's another thing to put it in a room where it's going to really need to be pushed as loud as it can. So we're gonna talk about that today. Now, I had uh, basically four events this weekend, three on Friday and one on Saturday. And when I loaded my truck, I knew that the first three events were small. Maybe there were 20, 30, 40 people maximum at any given time. So I said, you know what, this is a perfect opportunity for me to test out the Bose line array system. Right off the bat, I'm gonna say this. The footprint of the line array system, meaning the subwoofer, the high, the base plate for the line array, I've never had anything that small. The fact that I can put that all in my truck, I can put that all in the back seat of my car and it'll fit. So what I had on Friday was the Bose system, Denon Prime Go, which is the small battery powered all-in-one DJ system. And I took that with me, that alone. I had a speaker that I threw in the car just in case I never used it. I went through three events on Friday, running in and out of hospitals, setting up, breaking down, setting up, breaking down multiple times and it didn't get easier than the L1 system. Because of the footprint, because of the fact that the actual line array breaks up into two different poles, they fit in a bag, say this long, you got your sub and then you have your base. Oh, by the way, did I mention that every single thing that Bose gives you comes in a bag? I think a lot of other companies should listen to that. Every system you sell, anybody out there, should have a bag. I'm talking to you, JBL. So they all have form-fitting bags, which means that I feel more comfortable. Now, I will say this though, the JBL bag that holds the all-in-one part of the system, which basically feeds the line array in, I would have liked for the top part to have a little more padding, just because that's the most important part. So I would probably put that one in a hard case, just to be on the safe side. But besides that, everything else is fine. Now, I wanna talk about the sub and we'll probably break it down in a video where you can kind of see. The sub and the way it's set up, the way it's designed, it has the user in mind. The fact that it is a narrower speaker and the handle, which is a nice size handle, it doesn't feel like it's cutting into your hand and the balance of the speaker makes it easy to carry around. You pick it up, you can move it around. It's not like you're lifting. I always had an issue with the Eon subs because they're very, very wide. And being able to kind of get a grip around them, you're using a lot of strength getting that thing up. You don't have that issue here. I wanna talk a little bit about the Bose system real quick. And one of the convenient things about it. So Bose has the handle, which is obviously in the front, but it also has this little divot right here. And this little divot allows me to pick it up. There are these recessed grab points on all of the hardware. So it's easy to kind of pick it up if you need to put it in your truck or put it in something raised, just to be able to pick it up and put it down. Not have to kind of struggle with trying to grab a corner piece to get it on. It's, it's just very, very intuitive. I love when companies think about their user base and Clearly Bose is thinking about their user base. Now, uh, let's talk about the sound. Okay, so on my first video, when I played it, I said, oh, the sound is okay. Um, I'm gonna tweak it a little more and then we'll kind of figure it out. Right after that video, I plugged everything back in and I was going to use it and I downloaded 
the Bose app. The Bose app, it changes everything. Now you can make adjustments on the system, okay? The, the panel allows for sweeping adjustments and making those, those incremental changes. But the Bose app will actually not only allow you to wirelessly adjust volume, adjust the bass, they have preset profiles like music, uh, speeches already preset for you. But that's just one part. If you want to make custom settings like, oh, for this room, I always run it this way. For this room, I run it this way. You can create your own user profiles. And then that way, right when you get to the venue, you open up the app and there is no resyncing of the Bose system, by the way. It's not like you have to, you know, you know what I'm talking about, JDL. <laughs> There's no reason that I have to hold down the button to, to reconnect to it. This one, I open up the app, it's already synced to it. And once your Bluetooth is set, uh, your Bluetooth is on. It's always working. So the moment you pair your phone audio-wise to the speaker, it's always available to you. You can play your iTunes playlist right from your phone. Now you guys all know I have the larger version, which is the separate sub. And I think if you're doing larger events, the separate sub definitely is something you're going to need. I used it all day at the hospitals, never pushed it above like, you know, nine o'clock. It was super, super low and the bass was booming. It was loud. Everything was great. Line Array works perfectly. Still, Line Array, one of the best sounding parts of the system is the Line Array. The clarity of that high is really, really impressive. When I got it to the Saturday event where I actually had a lot of people and you know it was a real party, you know, we're not really doing parties yet, but you know what I'm saying. It was a real party. That's when I was really pushing it to its limits. And overall, I'm gonna say it sounded great. I was only using one sub, one line array. The line array part of it, I felt like was perfect. Okay, like it didn't have a single issue with the line array. It was beautiful from where I was all the way to the very end. And keep in mind, we were outside, so there was no sound being able to bounce back to me. All, it went straight through the tent, off into the ether. So as I walked all the way to the back doing a sound check, Mic check, one, two, one, two, two. Knowing that I could still hear everything was really, really impressive to me. Again, that's only one, one speaker. Now the sub was great, very warm sounding. It wasn't too boomy. You know, one of my biggest concerns was that it was gonna create kind of this boom effect around, around my area. And then you walk out and it just doesn't sound that good. Especially when you don't have other walls, again, for the bass to bounce off of. Now, this is where I'm going to say that it's probably important that if you're going to use something like that, the two sub setup is probably a better choice. Maybe the two sub and two highs. But I can completely understand why one system for like a wedding would be perfect for those parties where people want it to be loud, they want it to be warm, they want it to be inviting, they want it to be able to dance to it, but they don't want it to be bleeding out of their ears loud. This system sounded crisp the entire way. The clarity was there the entire time. It created a really, really good kind of listening dinner environment. Now, when people wanted to dance, because even though we're not dancing, people were dancing, just, you know, not near me. People were able to get up and I turned it up and people were partying and didn't have any issue. Now, like I said, I did push it to its limit. That sub was going as hard as it could, which is why I think a secondary sub would have been, would have been good. Now, I say that knowing that if I was rocking a single Eon, I would have run into the same situation where maybe it's just, I needed a little more bass for dancing. And of course I'm in the corner. That's another thing you have to keep in mind. So I'm being pushed all the way to the end, which is not as realistic as most parties. Most parties in a rectangle, you know, you kind of operate in the center of the long wall. So everybody's getting the sound equally. So I'm not really worried about the bass. I think the bass would have been fine. It's just, it was a long room. But I do love the fact that there is a little bit of a fall off. Not a fall off on the line array though just on the bass. So that means that on a dance floor, 
by the time that base hits the floor, it's going to be super, super warm. And by the time it passes the floor, it's gonna lose some of that, some of that oomph. But for the people that are sitting at their tables, they can still have a conversation. So it's a very uh, specific, uh, isolated sound, which I do appreciate. I'm really impressed by the Bose system, in all honesty. I'm gonna continue to use it just because I love the ease of use. <laughs> I love the size and the footprint. You know, I love the sound. When my host and the guests were doing their speeches, people could hear every word. That line array is no joke. So if you're in the market for a new system and you're looking at Bose, uh, you're gonna be very, very happy with it. All right, guys, if you found what I said are useful, hit that like button. If you found what I said are really useful, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you follow me on the Instagrams and the Twitters. Get on my Discord, because that's what we're talking about, all things Cleveland Terry, including the Wake Up in Cleveland show on Twitch. Guys, girls, always a pleasure. Bottom talk to you later. We'll talk soon. Peace.